All right, concept of equilibrium. Yeah, you get to write. You're going to get to be writing for the rest of the year. I seem to think it, it kind of impacts your grade, so we're going to go with it. We're going to be right. All right, so can somebody give me an example of equilibrium? Somebody give me an example of equilibrium. Like, you want the nature or just no, how, the just fact that the give me an example. react to this variable? No, no, not like chemistry. An, uh, just an example. When things are equal equilibrium. Equilibrium. When me and Jennifer are holding hands and pulling against each other, it's a force. Okay, go ahead and show us. Jennifer, hold my hand. All right, so they're pulling against each other on equal force. Equilibrium. All right, so kind of like I said, very, is what I said, a tug of war. So you have the class versus Mr. Hate. It would probably be about even. <laughs> That's about right. That's about right. Yeah. All right. So two sides pulling at equal force. Two sides pulling. Again, this is me trying to get you to relate to it. So I'll come up with whatever examples I can. Um, and then we'll go from there. If you deem something you don't need to write down, that's fine. But this, when you do this, this is the term, static equilibrium. So when nothing is changing, you're still pulling at the same force at the equal opposite direction, static equilibrium. So you're still pulling, you're still exerting a force. Something is still happening, but the other side is pulling with the same amount. That's static equilibrium. There's a difference between that and dynamic equilibrium. Does anybody know what that could be? Dynamic. Garrett, you need to study a little bit more. What'd you get on part two of that test? Oh, yeah, thank you, that's good. All right, very good, pat yourself on the back. There you go, good job. All right, dynamic equilibrium. We have gone over some examples of dynamic equilibrium already. Let me draw one, all right? So let's say we have a closed container, all right? Inside that container, we have some liquid, all right? So we got some water in here. And then above that water, we got these particles, all right? Somebody explain to me how that could be dynamic equilibrium. Okay, so I have some particles above the water. That's the water particles. I didn't change it and make it a different color. It's still the water in a closed container, and I have some gaseous particles. Yes? Well, um, this is a guess, but it's like... I like gases. Gases are good. It's not that there is any force on each other like the other one, but it's still like there's still a gas in the water molecules. It's like the amount of the same. Okay, I like your start. Finish. Aha, uh -huh, perfect. Gas turning into liquid at same rate, I'll just say same time. Liquid turning to gas. Okay, so that means if I have one of these guys that's going down, I'm gonna have another one coming up, right? Dynamic equilibrium. So it's always going to balance out. You're always gonna have the same amount of gas particles in a closed container as you will liquid particles. They're just gonna keep, one's gonna be going up, one's gonna be coming down, boom, boom, boom. Dynamic equilibrium. Another one could be um, a saturated solution. All right, so let me make a little solution container. All right, here's my solution container. And inside my solution container, I have this. I got some Na pluses and I got some Cl minuses. So a saturated solution of sodium chloride. All right, so we have a bunch of these Na, let's just say the whole container, all right? So I got these, I got these, all right, so I got these. But I also have at the bottom is, well, it's saturated, so I'm gonna have some solid. I think I have 
solid NaCl. All right? So what's going to happen? The same type of thing that just happened with the gas, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen? We're in a solution, so let me put some little water in there. Maybe that's confusing some of you. All right, this is water. There you go. It's water. What's going to happen? Same as this, but now just modify it for me. What's going to happen? Yes? It'll change. It'll go from a solid NaCl to a like the separate ions. Okay, so some of this solid is going to break into ions, and then what's going to happen? Those ions will turn back into solid. Ah, and then these guys might combine and go back into the solid. Dynamic equilibrium. So you're never going to have more. If it's saturated, I can't get any more ions. I can't get any more solid, but I can keep changing what I am. That's dynamic equilibrium. They're occurring at the same rate. All right, so that's the difference. So if you come across static versus dynamic, then you'll be good to go. All right, so let's define chemical equilibrium. All right. Chemical equilibrium. I'm just going to say equilibrium from now on is just EQ. I'm not going to keep writing equilibrium. EQ is equilibrium. All right? Opposing reactions proceeding at equal rates. And let me ask you, do the rates have to be the same? Like if I make so much product, do I have to then make that much reactant? No. No, they don't. They just have equal rates. So that means uh, the graph has plateaued or started to uh, thin out. All right, so let's take a look at this. We have N2O4. What is that? Dinitrogen. Uh, Dinitrogen. Tetra. Tetra oxide. All right, so that's going to dissociate into 2NO2 gas. All right, so let's just say we have a gas or a solid, whatever, it doesn't really matter. All right, so that's going to dissociate. Now, what happens is this is brown in color. All right, so let me find brown. This is brown. This is brown. This guy is clear. So if you had a closed container, what would you see? you start seeing some brown form. If you just had N2O, N2O4 put in there, you would start to see some brown form, all right? So it's gonna eventually reach some type of equilibrium, all right? So this is colors in brown. Let's take a look, remember, uh, let's look at a mechanism. We know what those are, we just did those. A mechanism for that. So we have two, we have a forward, and we have a reverse. Did you see, was this example in your book? No. All right, N2O4 gas. All right, so we have that. And then what we do is, we're gonna say the rate of F, what do you think the rate of F is? The forward reaction's rate. The forward so we're going to say Kf equals what? Somebody tell me what it equals. Concentration of? Let's just talk about mechanisms. We're just talking about mechanisms. So if I'm just talking about mechanism, it's just going to be the reactant. So let's make sure we define the difference. You're already stepping into equilibrium. We have to have both in order to have a happy medium. So at this point, the rate, the equilibrium constant and rate are completely different. Equilibrium constant and rate, completely different. Rate only deals with what? The reactants. So we have Kf of N2O4. 
And we also have a reverse reaction. That's going to be 2 NO2 gas makes N2O4. What is my K of the R? KR is K of the reverse. What's that going to be? Concentration of NO2 squared. All right. So we have those two things. So we can say, what can we say at this point in order to start delineating what our equilibrium constant is going to be? What can we say about these two things? What can you say? I'm going to help. Yes. KF of, of the forward, N2O4 equals KR of NO2 squared. All right? So those are going to be equal. All right? So if we rearrange that, we want to find our rate constant. All right? Want to find our rate constant. We could definitely do that, and I'm going to put it right here before I go to a new slide. I would say now we're starting to delineate how we get into an equilibrium constant. Yes. Is it? Why is it K F over K? <coughs> why is it what? K F over K R. I just re I'm just rearranging. What what did I do? I pulled out. Um, I divided by N2, O4, right, on one side, and then I have, this maybe I'm backwards, let me look at it. What in the K no, has to be next to N2, O4? No, no, do I look right or wrong? Somebody speak. Right. Should the KF be on the same side as the N2O4? Yeah. Like, should it be on the divisor? Or the well, just do it. Pull it out. So then it, Wait, you, you, I'm just rearranging it. Oh, so it, it's... Wrote, no, it's fine. Wrote, at, like, right next to the... Here? Here and here? Yeah, is it supposed to be there? Take this and algebraically rearrange it and tell me what you get. N202 squared divided by N204. Like rearrange this algebraically, that's all I did. I rearrange this. Oops. I'll write it down. Algebraically. I probably spelled that wrong, and I get this. Check it out. See if you can do that. Okay? Yeah. All right, that's all I'm doing. I didn't, uh, like, I'm not making chicken soup from chicken poop. I'm just rearranging it algebraically. Why is the KF on top of the KR? Because it's like cross multiplying. All right, it, it, take a second to tell your neighbor how I got that. If you can, do you guys need to? All right, I think we're okay now. I think we've made it past that point. All right, so now I have these two graphs. Let's check it out. So I got this one, and I'm using my horrible brown color. So, Kasha, you get to pick what color I want next. Oh, pink? Okay. All right, so I have these two things right here. Check it out. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to put concentration here. I'm going to put concentration here. And I'm going to put time. And time. All right, time and time. All right, we're good? Yeah, got it. All right, so for the first one, I'm going to take this guy right here. I'm going to put that should level off a little bit better than I did. I'm going to put NO2 here, and for this guy, I'm going to do this. All right, and I'm going to put N2O4. 
So think about that for a second with your neighbor. And then I'm, oops, this guy's gonna be great. All right, so think about that one and then this one. All right, I have that. Ah, I gotta make that pink. Make this guy pink. All right, so you're thinking about that one you're talking about with your neighbor. So think about that. Come up with what I'm trying to get at. And I'm going to ask you questions about Okay, who thinks they can tell me about the first strap? Yes? All right, as NO2 forms, N2O4 disappears, gets less. Okay, that's a start. Anybody else want to add some more to that? Yes? It shows the forward reaction where the N2O4 concentration will decrease because it's being like this, uh, dark enough to form an N2. Okay, so this is making what? NO2. Making NO2, right? And this line, in order to say, we're not using it all up. Let's take a look at the concentration, kind of what Cosette said too. We're not using this all up. Take a look. See this over here? Is this stuff all gone? Uh, no, it's not all gone. It would have to be all the way at the bottom. So again, at this time, this guy is making N2O4. All right? Um, where would equilibrium occur? All right, so I'm going to say, I'm just going to draw a dotted line here, a yellow, I guess. I'm just gonna, when they both level out, EQ achieved. Sorry about my yellow, all right? But I had to use something. All right, so EQ is achieved, all right? Now, what about this guy right here? So let me ask you this. Concentration time what does that mean to you? Anything? Does that mean anything else to you on the first one? Now tie it into the second one. Rate versus time. What happens? Okay. All right, so where is the equilibrium point? All right, so equilibrium. All right, so equilibrium is reached there. So what does this line tell you, the two lines when they're together? What does this tell you? When the rate's equal. The KF equals what? K -F. K -F. K -F. K -F. All right, so the rates are equal at that point. You're forming as much, well, let's not say you're not forming as much, but what's happening at this point point right here whenever you have a graph like this is the amount of formation of NO2 um, is going to be some rate as well as the forward N2O4 is going to be some rate but it's not changing anymore 
right? So you could be forming like three molecules of N2O2 and only two molecules of NO2, but the rate is constant. It's not changing anymore. Now it has gone into dynamic equilibrium. Okay? That's what we're trying to talk about. Any questions on that? All right. So, mm, let, me, let me add this. What quantities are equal in dynamic equilibrium? What quantities are equal in dynamic equilibrium? That's the question. All right. If the rate constant for the forward is larger than the rate constant for the reverse reaction, will the number be greater than or smaller than one? If the forward, if the rate constant for the forward reaction is larger than the rate constant for the reverse. Less than. Less than, no, greater than favors the products. So greater. How many people say greater? How many people say less than? All right, very good, got yeah. right on the front of your page. Let's go into that in more detail. So let's talk about the equilibrium constant. Time check. Thank you. All right, the equilibrium constant. So let's consider this, and somebody tell me if they've seen this before. Have you seen that before? What's it called? Haber process. All right, the Haber process. A, a, a favorite of AP. The formation of ammonia, all right? So in a closed system, a closed system, a container of that, a large um, vessel or whatever it may be, um, it appears to stop with three components of the reaction present at the same time. So in a closed system, the reaction appears to stop. This is what we have, all right? So let's take a look. All right, so you should have seen maybe these graphs. All right, so let's say I have this. I'm gonna go like this. This is gonna be H2. I'll go here. This is going to be NH3. Did you see this graph? No. I don't like to hear that. H2. All right. So at this point, where would equilibrium be reached? Which one? Which one? What's that? We have one of those. Oh, this is N2 on the bottom. Uh, okay. All right, concentration, time. All right, so time. All right, so where's my equilibrium gonna be? My yellow line that we're using today? All right, so again, where they all level out. All right, so what did this reaction begin with? N2 and H2. N2 and H2. So then we also said, well, if the reaction stopped, what if we just start with ammonia? So this one started with H2 and N2. So now we start, same thing, concentration, time, Let's start with just ammonia. And ammonia was my red line. So we're going to start with that here. So do this. NH3. All right. What do you think would happen with the other two? Somebody tell me where my black line should go. Below. Should it go above or below the NH3? Below. 
Look like the N2. Okay, my H2 is going to come up here. Sorry, this should level out a little bit better. H2, and my N2, which is my green line, is going to be a little bit less N2. All right, again, a one to three ratio should kind of make sense that we're going to be forming when we go back this way. We're going to be forming three of these to one of these. So the graph should indicate that. How is that different going the other way? This is a one for every third of this that's consumed, one of these for every third the other way, right? Negative one third, negative one makes two ammonia. So there's a big difference with that. So again, equilibrium is going to be reached when they all plateau. Let me look at that, all right? So make sure you know that's how we can determine that equilibrium is actually occurring. All right, so let's talk about the law of mass action. Anybody know anything about that? Read anything about the law of mass action? Yes, no, maybe? Yes. You did? Yes. All right, it's a big word for basically just writing your equilibrium constant from the equation. So all that is is this, AA plus BB, CC plus DD. All right, so what we have here, we're almost to KP, so don't worry, we're almost there. All right, so that means KC is going to equal what? Who can tell me? Ma'am. Of big C, right? And then to the C. Oh, did I? Okay. All right, big C. C. All right. And then the concentration of big D to the D. Yes. Over the concentration of big A to the A. And the concentration of big B to the D. Okay. So we know that for equilibrium, we're going to be products over reactants, concentration of products over the reactants. And those coefficients, those are a lot easier to do, you say now, those problems are a lot easier to do than maybe the kinetics, but the kinetics was pretty easy too. All right, so let's make sure we know that this is called the equilibrium constant expression. Okay, so equilibrium constant expression. C, this C, what does that equal? What does that mean? Concentration expressed in molarity. All right, concentration expressed in molarity. We're gonna talk about KP and KC. You have to be able to calculate the difference between the two. All right? So can we write a uh, equilibrium expression for the Haber process? What would it be for the Haber process? What would it be? Uh, NH3 KC equals the concentration of NH3 squared divided by the concentration of N2 times the concentration of H2. Okay, so we all agree with that? All right, so let's practice a couple. All right, let's practice a couple. Here we go. All right, so do these three, or four. 2O3. Three. 3O2 three gas. So if you don't want to write it down, or you mean whatever, you'll see it again. Uh, B, I just need the equilibrium expressions. 2NO gas plus Cl2 gas makes 2 knockle. Knockle. A wonderful gas. AG plus O aqueous. 
doesn't matter. Aqueous makes AG. Oh, we got to talk about these guys later this year. Two for the positive charge. Aqueous, those dynamite things. Silver, diammonia. And then the last one, B, CD2 plus aqueous plus BR, 4BR minus aqueous makes CDBR4. And I'm probably beating a dead bush, I apologize, but you should be able to write those real quick. You already done? Difference between K, well, for equal, uh, okay, now there's a big point. I want to make sure that you understand it. Um, and I think that what you're hinting at is this, all right? Big K is for equilibrium, all right? And with equilibrium, you're going to have to have the big K with something else. C, P, uh, S, K, S, P, which we'll talk about later, solubility product. Um, it has to be a big K. Rate constant from kinetics is little k. Is little little k. All right. Okay. Okay, make sure you don't confuse the two. So if you're solving for one, it's completely different than solving for the other. All right, uh, Paris, what do you have for the first one? Perfect. Margaret, what do you have for the second one? <coughs> okay, concentration of. Dan, what do you have for C? Uh, AG, I think it's 32 over AG times H. All right, and Eric, what do you have for D? Okay, very good. All right, so we can also do this in terms of pressure. It's a huge that you know the difference between the pressure and the non-pressure. Let me take two seconds to pause. <coughs> 